This is the Eye of the Tiger match for the television championship belt and for the hair. As the music plays the Eye of the Tiger theme song, this whole match was the concept of Rip Rogers. He challenged me. He named the stakes. My only idea was for the cage, and that was to prevent Hus uh, the King, Pez Watley, from coming in the ring. Rip Rogers pausing a bit. The lights come on, and there he is in all his glory, brushing his hair for the last time, raising his hemline just a bit so he can make it through the ropes. There I am smoothing out a lot of wet spots on the mat because this match followed the Randy Savage Radamias cage match and there was a lot of you know what coagulating on the mat and that was uh, potentially dangerous for broken and sprained ankles. I don't mind telling you I was extremely nervous before this match but as they said in the hour of power I'd rather try something and fail than try nothing and succeed. So I had a pretty good attitude going into this match. I figured no matter what happens, I was going to give it my best. The fans can't expect any more, and they should never expect any less from anybody. While the announcer is reading off the stipulations of this match, which took a long time, Hustler Rip Rogers is giving me the evil eye, and he was saying something right in my face, and I really can't remember what it was. I didn't even, it was pretty incoherent when I was hearing it, but I could tell from his expression that he was trying to psych me out, which was the furthest thing from my mind, because I was out there to do my best, and it was a little too late for any type of uh, psychological warfare, because the action was about to get very physical. So I decided to just let him know that I was in the thing. And he slaps me in the face, and I thought he should have learned his lesson from the last time that happened. But I figured the fight is on, the bell has rung, and now's the time to get physical. I certainly wasn't going to get my clothes messed up when he did that before. And a collar and elbow hookup, and I had thrown a little bit of style in there to let him know that I was loose. Here he has my hair, which is, I expected, and he gains the first momentum in the match by having my head against the fence. Now I'm really feeling his muscles because he has the power and he has the first hold of the match, a side headlock. But I always prided myself on being able to bridge out of almost any hold, and I managed to do so this time with not too much trouble. So he gets the first hold, and I got the first counter, and now I am the proud owner of a nice hammerlock, which I am trying to push past 3 o'clock so that he can really feel what I can do. There, I think you heard him give his little yelp. I think I really have some advantage here because I changed the position of my hammerlock, but he's grabbing my hair in. He gave me an elbow right to the side of the jaw, and I heard something click. And I was not too happy about that because he was an opportunist at that point. I think I got a little bit overconfident and my, I kept my face in jeopardy. But you live and learn. And now's my side headlock and my jaw still feels very, very um, shocked. There he has my hair. But I keep on with his side headlock. Stick with the winner. He's grabbing my hair some more. Tries to throw my head in the fence, but I put my foot up and tried to put the brakes on. Took him over in a side headlock, trying to lean into my man. Rip Rogers is on the floor, and Jim Bunning is looking for a three count, but that's not the purpose of this hold. It's not a pinning hold. It's just to wear down my opponent. Side headlock is one of my favorite holds for that. 
It can really disillusion your man, wear him down. There I give him a solid body tackle and I go for the body press. Pick him up now, go for the big body slam. Boom, he goes down and I said, this is my opportunity for a pin, but I got a one and a half count from referee Jim Bunning, who is counting very rhythmically in this match. Rip Rogers goes outside. This is a no disqualification match. One hour time limit for the TV belt. However, the hair is on the line throughout the entire match. It seemed like it was academic rule because there are no cage matches that last one hour. Not in the history as long as I've been wrestling. There's a nice go behind takedown by Rip Rogers, but I take advantage of my flexibility and turn that disadvantage into an advantage using a half Nelson. Rip Rogers kicks out of that. And very quickly, I get that front face lock. I'm trying to regain advantage. That was my battle plan to try to stay alert. There, Rip Rogers does a very good bit of scientific wrestling as he reversed that front face lock did a short switch and wound up the proud owner of an arm bar. Rip has a lot of power, and I could really feel that, and referee Jim Bunny is asking me if I give up. Not in your life. Rip Rogers is really leaning into it now. Giving up would uh, be a momentary solution to my problem. I try to do a bridge, but Rip Rogers gives me a very solid forearm right to the sternum, which can really take the wind out of your sails. There he pulls me by the hair. I'm trying to use a variation of an ankle lock, but Rip Rogers blocked me, but not the second time. I managed to get free. Then I saw he was a little bit slow to his feet, so I went for my pin. That was unsuccessful. I regained my old friend back, the front face lock, which is a very punishing hold. Ask anyone that's ever been inside of one. Rip Rogers has a body lock on me while I have the front face lock, and I believe I have a lot more momentum as proof that I bullied him into the turnbuckle. But look at that, double leg takedown, went for the body press, and uh, almost caught me sleeping. I'm gonna have to be a lot more alert. Now I'm a little wary, because Rip Rogers out wrestled me in that particular time. He's got a side headlock, and notice the positioning of his legs, really leaning into me. I throw him off, I drop down, and he gives me a solid body tackle. Count of one, count of two, and I managed to kick out. This match was very evenly matched. Neither one of us had much trouble with conditioning. There I am trying to do a bridge, but once again, Rip Rogers with the hair. Referee questioning Rip Rogers, but that's futile because this is a no disqualification match. He's trying to keep as much order in the ring as he can though. Count of one, and I do not want to be on my back. As you can see, I managed to give Rip Rogers a uh, token body press, but he flipped me off immediately without even a one count, and now I regain my front face lock. Front face lock and a headlock are two of my favorite holds. They're not very sophisticated, but they do work. And they also give me a chance to get some rest while my opponent carries all my weight. In other words, let him do the work. Now Rip Rogers is trying to bully out of the front face lock by having an arm bar, and he looks like he's very successful in doing it. I've just about lost all my leverage. There he is. Now this is strictly muscles is what Rip is using right now. He is just muscling out. 
and I'm trying to reverse that, now he grabs the hair. So now it's Rip Rogers with the arm. There I am once again with a bridge, but we'll see what Rip Rogers thinks of that. Boom! For all my trouble, a forearm to the midsection. Now I'm <laughs> trying to find some breath. Flying snap mare by Rip Rogers. Count of one, count of two. Now Rip Rogers senses that his last forearm to the midsection really did some damage. There he gives me a boot to the midsection and although that hurt, I was a little bit relieved that he chose the midsection since there were a few other parts of my body that were open. There's a forearm right to the back and a big elbow smash to the back of the neck. Now I come up with a punch of my own to the stomach. Drop kick right to the face. I was proud of that drop kick. I felt that that was what I needed in order to put Rip Rogers back in the corner. Hit him right in the face with that drop kick. There I lunged into his midsection and I get a side headlock. I'm trying to lean in as much as I can to that side headlock, just like Rip Rogers was doing. There I change my position to try to get every bit of muscle I can into his face. Now he's got the hair and right in the turnbuckle. Now that hit my back pretty hard. But as you can see, not as hard as I'm about to hit it right now. Boom. And I remember it felt a lot worse than it looked. Now I felt my back was coming apart and Rip Rogers seized that opportunity to give me a very well-placed boot right to the back. Rip was a very excellent competitor in this match, clubbing my back with his feet. Count of two only. I shouldn't have been laying on my back, should have, but I was trying to protect it, but then what you really want to protect is a body press. Vicious forearm right to the back. Rip has very large forearms. There's a flying bill throw, but he follows me down to increase the intensity of the impact that I'm suffering on the back. Now I'm learning my lesson. I'm trying to get away and try to prevent a pinfall. There's a small kick to the midsection and a large punch to the back. Here's the headbutt to the midsection. That was very resourceful and I managed to give him an uppercut that sent him rocking. Rip Rogers is now in the corner where I wanted him and there's another headbutt to the midsection born out of desperation. I had a lot of good luck with my right hand to the jaw. Referee Jim Munning doesn't really have much to do. This is a no disqualification match. He's there for the big job of counting people's shoulders down and checking for submission. There I was on my back, and I thought I'd better get off my back before Rip Rogers gets it into his mind to go for a pin. Here he is with a big bear hug, and Rip Rogers has a lot of strength, and I have a previously injured back. He's got his arms laced around the small of my back. Referee Jim Bunning is checking for a submission, but there's a little bit too much on the line for me to give up. Referee is 